What is up everyone? Circleflex here bringing you guys another V view. Today we're going to take a look at the Centurion Mark 5-1, the RAAC Tier 8 British Premium tank that came into the game like, I don't know, half a year ago? A couple of months ago at the very least. And um, basically it is a Premium Centurion with one small difference. But it's actually a really big difference. Because this thing gets hull armor that the Centurion at Tier 8 just doesn't have. This thing, um, let, let, you know what? Let's just take about. Let's let, let's not get ahead of ourselves, right? Let's take a look at the weaponry first. You have the nineteen hundred DPM, two thirty alpha, which is always ten lower because it's British. I don't know. <laughs> two point two one aim time, dispersion of thirty two, which is really really nice as a base dispersion level. This thing goes fifty, has almost nineteen power to weight, uh, ten degrees of gun depression, and fourteen hundred health. Really good turret armor like a Centurion should have, and now we get to the hull armor, which is 120 on a British medium, ladies and gentlemen. So the obviously obvious comparison here is to the Tech Tree one, right? The Tech Tree one. And it is pretty much the same tank, but you'll notice there is a fair bit of red on the Centurion 1 camp. Namely, the gun is handling is worse on the Centurion 1? What? And it has less edge power, power to weight is a lot worse. Now, granted, it does have better uh, mobility on hard, on like the, on like effective tank the first memes. But in reality, because of the how, higher power to weight, the Centurion 5 1 feels just as, if not more, maneuverable than the Tech Tree 1. And then this is also a really nice one uh, 50 more health. Wow, we wow. And this, the Centurion has 76 hull armor, and this thing has 120. So, uh, unlucky for us, the model on TextGG looks, um, how do I put this? Not complete at all, but the upper plate is showing. So the upper plate, 202. That's really freaking good. I know the lower plate is uh, now actually a hole in this model, but it's really weak, right? We all know this on Centurions. And it's actually a really big lower plate as well. Um, so keep that in mind. It's frontally unangled. It's like almost 200. And if we take a look at this, this ye oldest centurion of the tech tree, it is 120. Pog champ. And then the lower plate is 106. So the lower plate is pretty much the same on the centurion 5-1, but the upper plate is super sick. Now, why is this is such a huge deal? It would always be a huge deal. But these tanks are meant to be hauled down warriors, right? We have 10 degrees of gun depression. Look at that. And it makes the effective armor of the upper plate still really good if you can even hit it. Because most of the time, they'll hide this lower plate or upper plate even and show only the turret. So you can still work really well on the ridge lines and all that with the Tech Tree Centurion. Same goes, by the way, for the Swedish Premium, which is exactly like this tank. Um, but yeah, obviously, really, 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 really good turret armor nowadays uh, since it got buffed again. Um, and this thing just gets higher, higher armor for reasons. So if you put this gun down, because that's still a little bit showing, you're you're infinitely safer in this tank, and you can you can climb up the hills a little bit further and just be that much more comfortable in playing it, knowing that your upper plate is this freaking good. Uh, yeah. So is this pay to win? <clears throat> I guess a little bit, in a way, right? Uh, it's the same tank, just better in the upper hull. That's the only real change. So if you like the Centurion, then you'll love this tank because it's literally better. And it has to add a benefit of looking dank as shit. Look at that. Mm. Oh my god. And here actually you can see the effect of armor now. Pog champ. So the lower plate is really, really weak. Armor plate, really, really good. And it looks super, super dank. Uh, also, side note, it has this thing in the back. I'm not sure what that is. But um, you can shoot through this. This is just like, this doesn't exist in terms of like doing damage. So don't worry about showing this. Your tank really starts like here. And it just, it looks really freaking cool. I gotta be honest. It looks way better than the regular Centurion as well. Uh, so yeah, a little bit awkward. But uh, yeah, good tank. If you like Centurion, you'll like this as well. But um, as per usual, I will have to uh, show you guys a little replay, of course, to see how it handles in the game. But as you can see by the stats, if it's fully kitted out, it's just pretty sick, right? We have 400 base view range like the Centurion does. Um, you go up to 2,500 DPM, which is a little bit like last year. Most of the mediums will have 2,400 or more. So a little bit less there. And that mostly comes down to the fact that you do 230 damage per shot because you're British instead of 240 like everyone else. 
So uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's get into the uh, into the replay, shall we? Because it's also on the new map, Empire's Border, and this is like the fifth time I'm playing on it out of the six times I've played this in total before making this review. So uh, yeah, full tier eight matchmaking, which is a nice one for review purposes, because you can really see what how it, well it does against its against its own tiers, basically. And here you can see that the tank looks really fucking cool. I love how the Centurion looks. And again, we have that sick upper plate. And I've been playing only on the left side of the map in every single game, just to try and learn the left side of the map. Once I feel comfortable here, I'll try going to the right side, and that's kind of how I learn the maps, right? So this thing is no, uh, is no fan of nothing else. We're gonna go left, we're gonna go to the K JK line, and then up the 1-2 line. And um, from my previous experience on this map, where I fought at, uh, what is this, G4 and H3, I noticed that the H3 one has a plateau looking down into like a valley. So this thing having such a brutal upper plate and such a brutal turret, because it's a Centurion, that's where I'll be heading. <clears throat> uh, and basically, uh, some of you guys might be wondering, so Sirka, what do you think about this map? Well, I've literally seen at most a third of the map, so I can't really say anything bad or good about it because it would be unfair, right? I've played this maybe six times. And like I said, I've always gone to this flank, regardless of the thing I'm playing, because I just want to, you know, I just want to learn the map a little bit. I'm just going to speed up the replay a little bit before we get into the action. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we get here. And uh, also the ELC moved up. And I shoot him once, he thinks I'm not going to shoot him again, but I'm going to be like, Hey, what's up, butter? And we shoot him one more time. So we get two basically free shots, and he actually bounces us, even though he has a full side shot. And the Centurion side armor is, is, of course, not very, very good. Now, is it? And this is basically where the fun begins, because look at this. Hmm. That's a pretty... That's some pretty decent shots, I'd say, right? And how much are we showing to the enemy right now? Uh... Yeah, we're showing almost the lower plate. Not the lower plate. Nothing at all. Just the turret. And with the Centurion, the regular Centurion, I'd be just as safe as I am now. But from the Type 59... Uh, maybe worrisome that he can hit my upper plate, but it's gonna be a hard shot, right? So whilst the upper plate is infinitely better, and it's just it just is, it's just so, it's just so much better. Uh, a lot of the time, you will have similar games, right? In, in once you're hauled down like this. Um, but anyway, we got some really sick shots going here, shall we? So aim for low play live. Actually hit the strip here and don't pen him. Or oh, we're kind of a sad panda. Now I'm just choosing what's my best shot without exposing my tank, basically. And he still tries to climb up. It's like, oh, it's a bad time. Go up, go up. And then he goes down. We fall back a bit. Shooting the lower plate again. He only hits our tracks. And we actually repaired that so I can get some better shots on the Lova who's trying to climb up. And I don't want him to be hold down. Shoot him again. We have the S1 as backup as well. There's a Scorpion behind there to have to be a little bit careful of. We just keep pummeling down, and this is what you want to do with Centurions, right? And the premium is exactly the same, so that's what we're doing. Live is now one shot, the S1 screws up a shot. Then him again, Type 59 bounces us, and this is kind of nice, because the Scorpion is like, oh, I probably have one more shot, and then ah, sneak a little tracking shot into the Scorpion there. And he clearly doesn't have a bracket anymore. We can RT for like... <laughs> Like, uh, over a quarter of our health. Uh, over a third of our health, rather. But we still had a ready kit, so we used our first aid kit and get the second shot to the Scorpion. Take him out. We're on three kills now, and obviously using our tank's greatest strength. And uh, now we're going to go for this Alpine Tiger, who is clearly fixated on the Canoniac Panzer. And I'm going to try and go for tracking. Take a little bit more time to aim. Get the tracking shot, so he has to use his repair kit, which is always nice. Never underestimate the power of tracking someone and making him use the... Repair kit early in the engagement. And now we're gonna close the distance. We get a little bit of spotting from the artillery. And then he gets shot in the face again. And here I just go for the cupola. Clink that one off since our dispersion is really, really good. And now the ISU and the ELC are left. Trying to get a cheeky shot to the ISU. Actually managed to hit it and high roll a little bit as well. So I guess the ELC tries to run away into our scout. He dies. The ISU dies before we get there. And uh, that's pretty much all she wrote on this flank. And now it's just cleaning up time. And <laughs> basically, that was it, right? Like, we can just go back. We know the Care for the Action X was last spotted there. 
And I'm just gonna go right for him. It's kind of funny. Because he shows up right there! And we go for the tracking shot again. We repair instantly, he repairs later. We track him again, no damage, but now we got him. Now we got him, because now we have the back. And we can just sneak in here, track him again, and there's nothing he can do about it. Even though, funnily enough, he, uh, he does kill the CDC. Anyway, this is just farm levels. And this is why tracking and having such a... This is why I like uh, high, higher... Um, Higher DPM, like higher rate of fire, lower alpha guns, almost all the time on all my tanks. Like I just do so much better with these kinds of these kinds of shots than I do with like high alpha mediums, for example. But yeah, the Centurion R A A C just literally better than this, than the Tech Street one in a pretty in only only the upper plate, but it's actually a big deal. So uh, yeah, that it is <laughs> what it is, boys, and. Um, Again, if we just uh, take a look at the stats, uh, the post-game stats, shall we? Uh, obviously, victory. We got the first mark on it as well, which is rather nice. Uh, 1,457 basic speed. We got the Fire for Effect, Bruiser, Fighter, and Jewelist medallions. Um, 3,726 damage. Five kills for us. Uh, Halloween event was going on, but even without the Halloween event, we still would have made... Let's see. This is, uh, let's say, roughly 42k... Let's say this is, well, let's say 40, this is a 10, so like 70k-ish credits without the event. And with the event, we made 186. But you got two, 2,186 XP and 108 free XP. So yeah, uh, it's just a really nice tank. I like it a lot. Uh, it has really reliable turret armor to the point where you don't even really have, like you have like one weird like weak spot um, <laughs> like on the tank itself, like you have this thing here. But that's about it. Like, it's just a really solid tank. Uh, 230 alpha is a little bit annoying at times. And um, because, you know, yeah, because it's British. <laughs> anyway, that was my review for the RR or the RAAC Centurion 5-1. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, if you're new to the channel. Uh, check out some, other, some of my other reviews. So if you want to see some stream highlights, I got those too. If you want to see, like, you know, the big... Uh, highlight reels we got those as well uh, but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed the review i'll catch you guys in the next one peace out guys